Hey man, what's up? This is Mike Tyson, man, speaking for Mark and Matty Yikes on Cold Ones. I want to thank you for watching this show. I bet when there's only one God of Muhammad bless you with this show. Praise be to Allah. Watch this show or I'll bite your ear off. Good Friday, everybody. What's going on? You're in the right place. Pull up a stool and place your order. Mike Tyson with the introduction today. Thank you, Mike. Having cold ones with Mark and Matty Ice Radio Program broadcasting to you live from Studio B57 in beautiful Southern Connecticut. Streaming all day, every day on the YouTube website. I'm Mark Verrem, and yeah, I'm a little bit excited. But I'm always excited. Always excited to talk sports and share ideas with all the fans and followers of this little program we have here. But I can't possibly do that alone. No, 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 no. So joining me is a man who needs no introduction. Is a man who not only drinks Hennessy at halftime, he drinks Hennessy all the time. They call him the Iceman for that reason. On the rocks. Maddie, Maddie Ice, how are you today? How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, Mark? Are you doing okay after that Mike Tyson interview you had before? You got all the body parts left? We're gonna I'm I'm doing alright. We're gonna get to that later. Intro getting longer every week. I'm not complaining. It's getting a little long. I'm just saying. It's getting a little long, just saying. Let's get right into it. Florida, Alabama, this week, this Saturday, SEC Championship, four o'clock. What are you gonna be doing? Number two, Alabama. Number one, Florida in Atlanta. National title berth on the line. The biggest game of the year so far. If you're not watching this game, you're probably not a college football fan. Probably not a college football fan. You better have a damn good excuse for not watching, by the way. You better be going to Morton's or Ruth's Chris with the wife or girlfriend if you're not watching this show. This is a big game. Big game. And basically what you have here is winner goes to the championship, loser... Goes to a lesser bowl. Still mm-hmm. probably a BCS bowl. but or, or, They're not going to go to the national championship. And that's unfortunate because whoever the winner ends up playing in the national title game, there's a good chance they're not as good as the loser of the SEC championship game. There's a good chance. Very good chance. I mean, t- talk about Florida and Alabama and compare them to a Texas or a Cincinnati. You know, for the winner of this game be it Florida, be it Alabama, once David beats Goliath, the next guy coming around isn't that big, isn't that hard. It's not not exactly ho-hum, but it ain't exactly how this game is going to be. Right. This this is a a national championship in and of itself. The winner of this game has to play two national championships. Texas, they're playing Nebraska- not so much. Not so much, Nebraska. You got a pretty good defense. You put Nebraska on the field with Florida, it's going to get ugly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I believe it. I mean, but that being said. With that being said, there's that There's that phrase again. <laughs> two teams, two the best teams in the nation, toe-to-toe. Last year, Alabama came up short. Couldn't convert in a red zone. Saban will tell you if you listen. They settled for field goals in the red zone. That's something you cannot do against Florida because you know Florida is going to get theirs. Yeah, yeah. And on the other side of the token, Florida, whenever they got in the red zone, they were converting. They were converting. They got the touchdowns. touchdowns. Yeah. They have a good offense to convert in the red zone. You got Tebow, the big power runner. Demps with the speed. Aaron Hernandez from Bristol. Who, might I add, I am 1-0 and against in my career. Just wanted to just, just, throw that just out Just saying. There. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. He's a big, tall guy. Can go up and catch it in the red zone. Does Alabama have the receiving threats, the tight ends? Have they proven themselves to be able to score in the red zone? They got Ingram. Ingram's a good back. Yeah. Ingram's uh, a potential Heisman candidate. But, let's face it. Offense... Has not won the has not won the teams these games all season. Mm. It's defense. It, it's going to come down to defense in these two games, and these are two of the best defenses in the country. Florida has ten out of eleven starters from last year. Alabama has they might not have as much talent as Florida, but they've been playing great as a unit. Alabama has an opportunity here. 
For the past two years, all Alabama has heard, all we have heard, is how good Tim Tebow is about this Florida dynasty. They won it last year. Everybody came back for this year. They gave him the title. Matty Ice, you gave him the title just because of number one. You gave him it, and that's yeah. fine. It's tough Alabama, to bet against them. It's Florida's... Why you gave Florida the title this year is because they had 11 starters coming back on defense. Oh, they had 20 out of 22 returners from last year. Alabama has the same thing going for them next year. So if they win this game against Florida, they finally knock out Florida. Alabama champs, 2010 to 11. Tim Tebow ain't coming back next year. They knock off Florida this year. Florida's done for a couple years. Safe to say. Rebuilding. Rebuilding. Maybe Urban Meyer books for Notre Dame. We don't know. They beat Texas in the national championship. Now next year, they got the same team out there. We're talking We're talking two years in a row, a repeat here. So this is a huge game. Don't get me wrong. This is a big game. This is the last chance they get at Florida. Because if Florida wins this game, they're written in stone as, as a dynasty forever. Maybe Tim Tebow is, is legendized. If he isn't already we'll a hear, legend. We'll hear for the next 50 years maybe the best team ever in college is yeah, this Florida team. Right. And this is Alabama's last chance to do it. Yeah. This is the last dance for them. This is the last dance. They, they can ask the girl out. They have one more song to, to ask this girl to dance, you know, to dance with, with that girl that they want, to hold that, that silver trophy. Oh, yeah. And... And I think Alabama has one crucial thing working in their favor. If we're going to talk about defense, Florida's best defensive player, Carlos Dunlap, arrested Monday night or Tuesday morning. DUI, asleep at the wheel. Got to a red light, fell asleep at the wheel of his car. Police asked him questions. He was passing in and out of consciousness. I tell you, it's a shame. It's a shame, Matty Ice, because this, this, this is a kid... Carlos Dunlap, who everybody's got him first round. This is a kid on the brink of making millions of dollars. Yeah. If I'm about to make millions of dollars, I got the biggest game in my life coming up this Saturday. You know, some grueling workouts, the combine, and then I get drafted. I get a lot of money to play in football. Why make that mistake? Is the maturity level not there? I don't get it. How do you? How much do you have to drink to pass out at, in a at car the, at a red light? Six, seven, two forty. I, I don't understand how much Hennessy you have to drink. Right. You know, maybe you know? during championship week, it's not the best idea to take a bottle of Jack to the face here. Not, or you know what? And not that I'm condoning what he did. You, you don't have friends that could drive. You don't have anybody that could drive you. You're Carlos Dunlap. You're about to make millions. Have somebody drive for you. You're probably one of the most well-known You're well known. people on campus, and you don't have anybody. You can't to... miss this guy. So it's it's unbelievable that the just the blatant disregard for uh, almost his own life here. It's and selfish. It's a selfish act, not to him himself, to his teammates, to his family. It's just selfish. And this is something that... Urban Meyer, you don't see this often with Urban Meyer. With that being said, let's get back to the game. You know, yeah. last year, last year, Bama didn't convert. I think revenge is on their mind. You know, they've been in some close games. A close game against Auburn that helped them. Florida, you know, they've been in some close games. They're, they're, I mean, they've definitely sputtered sometimes this sputtered. year. They they, Both they had a close sputtered. game against South Carolina. Mississippi State gave them a good run. Tennessee gave them a good run. Um, I think if you look at Nick Saban's track record, he has a he has this habit of he has this revenge thing. Yeah, you know, if he loses to a team one year, he'll come out and he really wants to go after him. He usually gets the job done the next year. And I'm not saying he's going to blow out Florida, but revenge is a great motivator. I think you you're going to see an Alabama inspired team here that's that's looking for the win, hungry for this title, and like you said, it's their last shot. And I think that's what's going to ultimately be the deciding factor, what puts Alabama over the top here. You heard it here, folks. We agree. Alabama's going to win this game and go to the BCS title game.